having our quarterly ward meeting. Um, today we're going to have Rob May, the city planner. The, like I said earlier, the mayor was supposed to be here, but he had a family emergency. Uh, Rob will basically be going over all the development that's going downtown, a lot of new exciting things happening uh, in the downtown area and across the city. Um, we also have State Rep Jerry uh, Cassidy here tonight to say a few words. And we're going to start it off with uh, Captain Mark Picaro. We're going to get uh, talking about uh, the uh, War II uh, Legion Parkway, walking beats, uh, everything that's going on down in the downtown area. There's a lot of concerns with the businesses down there. But uh, Mark's going to give you an update on what's going to be going on as far as patrolling and what have you. He's going to take any questions that you have. So, Mark, come on up. Thank you. Captain, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, for those of you who may not know me, I'm Captain Mark Picaro with the Brockton Police Department. There you go. I just don't want it to fall. There we go. Is that a little better? Oh, all right. Um, just a general update now that it's springtime. Uh, several of our specialized units are going to start to be seen a lot more. And what I mean is our motorcycle unit, our bicycle unit. Our walking beats are going to come back next week. I just saw the schedule posted today. So those are like, like I said, specialized seasonal units. The weather's getting better, so you're going to see them out a lot more, particularly in the downtown area. So uh, hopefully they can uh, give us a hand and make a bit of a difference out there. I'll take any issues or questions that anyone may have. Sir. I just want to thank you because ever since I came last year and talked about some of the issues that have gone on in our, in our area at One North Main. Mm -hmm. You've taken a personal interest yourself in helping us and some of the problems have gone away. Right. Okay? It's still, you know, touchy. The yeah. The cops have been there, you know, as of late. Um, uh, we've been in our building to observe activity that goes on in Perkins Park and mm -hmm. I just want to thank you. Usually you get the complaints. I just want to thank you for the attention. That I appreciate that. that. Yeah, thank you very much, much, Mark. I appreciate that. And <clears throat> when I was here last year, there were a lot of concerns regarding, for the most part, homeless people downtown. And it's, it's a difficult issue. It's an overwhelming issue for us at times. So um, from a police point of view, we can only do so much. But we're trying to do our best, and it's a work in progress. Um, but I, I'm glad to hear that I, I've been able to help you through our offices, and uh, we're going to continue to do that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, from the Zion Baptist Church. Yes. Right. Right. You know, you know, sleep in there and then we try to wake them up, you know, when we're coming to church or a meeting and there's an issue. Yeah. That's, your address is 80 Legion Parkway. I, I think a while back the counselor had reached out to me regarding that. And we've been trying to have the cruisers go by from time to time and move people along. And I think a few... A few weeks ago, maybe about a month ago, there was an arrest made in that area. So you'll see us out there. And the bikes were around on Sunday, this past Sunday. There was Yeah, we've, over the last year, we've significantly increased our bicycle unit, aside from the motorcycle unit, the pedal bikes. I think we have over a dozen offices now. So I've asked them to hit a lot of the hot spots downtown, in particular Legion Parkway, 1 North Main. So you should be seeing them a lot more, especially now that the weather's better. Anyone else? Has anyone had any issues in the neighborhood or anything that they'd like to address? <coughs> I guess you're doing a great job. All right. <laughs> uh, th there was one other thing I'll bring. Oh, go ahead, sir. Yep. Right. 
Right. A lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I think there's been a spillover effect with One North Main regarding activities on that property, and that's something we can certainly have the the pedal bikes, the the bicycle unit, along with the motorcycles. Uh, to go in there. I know at the end of that parking lot into the woods is kind of like a no man's land, so we can certainly get in there. I have another concern. Yes, sir. With, um, the methadone clinic closing in Quincy. Uh huh. And the paper said they were going to be <clears throat> migrating to Brockton. Is that something that you are aware of? I, I have not heard that, so I'm not sure. That's the first I've heard of it. Ma'am. Mm -hmm. um, what would you consider to be acceptable and what's the latest that people are allowed to play loud music in their yard and have gatherings and things like that? It's not so much what, what I consider acceptable, it's what you people consider acceptable. So I'm just going to come up with an example. On your street, if a neighbor is having a party or playing loud music, they could have that music cranked up all the way. But if everyone else on the street is fine with it, then they're not bothering anybody. You know what I mean? It, 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 it's, it's relative to the people in that area. When it starts to bother people, they call us and we go down and it's the offices, the particular officer's assessment of the situation, whether it's loud or not. The officer tries to make a judgment call that they may ask the person the problem, can you lower it please? And try and get some compliance that way. There's no particular time that I'm aware of. So what might bother you at midnight could bother somebody at, at high noon. It's, there's no particular time in Brockton where they say, you know, at, at 10 p.m., everything has to get shut down. Like I said, if at 10 p.m. someone's having a, a large party and it's not bothering any neighbors, they're allowed to continue it. So there's no, no particular time frame where something has to be shut down. But if it's a nuisance, you call. Yeah. You have a nuisance oh, audience. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. So if it's a, no matter what time of day it is, it could still be loud at 2 o'clock in the afternoon driving you crazy. So it's the same thing. We had um, some folks behind us like, <coughs> last summer or the summer before, and they started the party at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and at 11 o'clock it was still going, and it was like, I mean, I, at 7 hours, that's enough. Yeah, th I mean... And, you know, a lot of people may say, you know, four in the afternoon, that's not a big deal. But, you know, if you've got like an infant that's trying to take a nap or something, you're right next door to this, that, that could be a problem. It's fine. It's when it drags on for seven or eight hours. Right. You know, and it's still at the same decibel. Yeah. Yeah, if it gets to the point that you can't tolerate, you know, it's bothering you, and now it's disturbing your peace, it's bothering, you know, you give us a call and we'll come down. Okay. You're welcome. Anybody else? There's one other thing I'll bring. Is right. Pet Petronelli Way part of your area? No, but your you, ward? You, it's, part of, uh, it's across the street, but go ahead. We had received a complaint. The location was 36 Main Street, but it was regarding activity on Petronelli Way. Um, a lot of illegal activity there, drugs and people hanging out and loitering as, as employees on Main Street are probably trying to walk to their cars on a parking lot on Petronelli Way. So that was one other issue I wanted to say that I've asked the bicycle unit to start paying close attention to when they're on their patrols to go down Petronelli Way and just get in there and see what they can see. And I know we re really don't want to say how many walking beats we have, how many patrols, or when they're going out or anything else like that, but will they be increased this year as far as... Uh, I, I saw the schedule for, for next week. It seems... You know, I, I don't have last year's numbers, so I can't say this year compared to last year, but I, we're putting out at least three next week, so, you know, in conjunction with everything else we got going on, so that's... And if one. anybody has any issues, we can get in touch with you, and you can target the areas that they are complaining about. Oh, absolutely, sure. Yeah, because if, if we don't know about it, you, you may know of a problem. You have more knowledge than I do. 
you know what I mean, or the, the police department does, you may be at your boiling point with a particular issue, but if we're not aware of it, we can't give it attention, you know? Sure, yeah. Park. Yes. Right. Yeah. If they're blocking your driveway, that's against the law. They can't do that. Yeah. If there's any sort of parking issues, call us. We'll come down and check it out. Anybody else? Any issues? Or? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Impaired driving, it, it's like pot everywhere in the city now. Mm -hmm. I just thinking forward, do you think that it's going to be more criminal activity? Do you think it's going to be more? I don't know. Incidents? It's hard to say, right? Yeah, it's. I I hope not, but yeah. I, I just don't know. I can't say. I'm not sure. Because I smell it when I drive, like behind people. Yeah. Yeah, there's a misconception, like people, you know, it's been legalized to, to a certain degree for people over 21, but you're not supposed to be smoking it in a, I mean, everybody knows that, you know what I mean? Because it could be considered OUI drugs. Right. Yeah. But it's hard to, I would assume it's hard to prosecute if you stop somebody for that now, right? Unless they crash into a large pole. Right. The, you know, you need some other things like they just like a, a you know, a yeah. drunk driver, the weaving, they right. went through a red light, or so, you know, other factors as well gotcha. to, um, to handle that. Anyone else? <clears throat> okay, buddy. All right, sir. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for coming my, down my today. Pleasure, Appreciate sir. it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, come on. Just yeah, <laughs> over the wire. Oh. There we go. All right, thank you. I uh, also recognize Senator Mike Brady just came in. He's here tonight. <laughs> Ward 6 City Councilor Jack Lally. <laughs> and we have Billy Hill, President of the Firefighters Union, back there. Okay. Now, um, like I said, the mayor could not make it tonight, but a uh, just as important person. <laughs> The city planner, Rob May, is here tonight. He's going to, a lot of new things happening downtown and across the city, and he's going to come up right now. Come on up, Rob. Well, I was expecting to be the warm up act. Um, I'm not used to being. Now you're just the act. Now I'm just the act. Um, not used to headlining all the time. Uh, but. The last five years, um, had, there's been a lot of work and activity going on in the background, the making of the plans, getting things together. And I think that you now see that, uh, especially reflected in the things that have happened in the last five months and that what will be happening over the next uh, calendar year. Uh, we have been working very hard with City Council and our Beacon Hill representatives. Um, to make sure that Brockton is in the forefront of uh, economic development activity here in the state and in southeast Massachusetts. So uh, we were able to secure and now have started uh, construction on a new 414 space parking garage off of Petronelli Way. Um, what's going to happen is once that garage is open, all those surface parking lots that are around it will become available for redevelopment. So we should see more um, economic activity happening from that. We've also seen a new groundbreaking at 47 West Elm um, in March and that is going to be a new um, ground up construction. Some of you 
may remember uh, on West Elm, there was an old uh, professional office building burned down several years ago. The building has been um, torn down and the redevelopment authority has uh, worked with and sold the property to a local developer uh, who is building uh, 42, 45, I'm looking in the back to get a high sign, uh, 42 units of new uh, market rate residential development. Uh, this gentleman, uh, Joffrey Anatole, who has uh, done another project, uh, or has done another project here in Brockton, and that's at 47 uh, Pleasant. And some of you remember that as the standard modern printing facility. That just uh, reopened last year as a new uh, market rate residential development. It's right across the street from the uh, central fire station. We're also working with a group to um, construct a, a new mixed use development at 121 Main Street. That's the site of the old Kresge building. Uh, NeighborWorks uh, is going to be constructing about a um, 48 units of residential development there with about 3,000 square feet of commercial space on the first floor. So it's going to be a very pedestrian activating uh, building there on the corner. Um, and the redevelopment authority has also been working with us on the redevelopment of 19 Main. That's the old first parish building uh, next to the old Times building, but it's, it's kitty corner to the uh, neighborhood health center. Um, so we have a lot of economic activity happening in, in Ward 2. Uh, we also see some uh, new growth going on in Ward 5 as both of those form the two downtown wards. And so we've been very happy to work with um, Councilor Monahan on making sure that our plans uh, really support a strong and proactive growth environment in downtown. Um, one of the big projects that we have been working on right now is a traffic study that will hopefully advance the return of two-way traffic to Main Street and to Warren Avenue. Um, so we're looking at um, how we can achieve that and we should have construction drawings at the end of this process. So uh, it won't be too long before we start having a series of public meetings uh, to bring more people uh, into the, the planning process. And what else is happening in War II? Um, oh, d Claire, Go ahead. Claire Cronin was uh, able to secure some money um, in uh, last year's budget for, um, I want to say Brent Playground, but that's it. Yeah. Ash Street Playground. Ash Street. Well, Ash Street yeah. borders War II, which we work on there too. So it's, it, it's close, it's close. We're all neighbors. Um, so there's a lot of stuff happening in our area, and uh, we're real happy to be a part of that. that it, oh, excuse me, Jerry. It was you that got the money. All clear. All, all right. Uh, he told me to say that. Just he, okay. It's it's part of the deal, isn't it? So we're we're excited to see what's happening here. Um, oh, Lincoln School is also. Um, uh, under review, uh, the old school has been closed for close to 10 years, and we're talking with a group right now who is interested in acquiring it from the city and turning it into um, senior housing. So they'll do a historic restoration of the building and uh, build about 30 um, senior units, affordable senior units. So we're really excited about that. So um, I guess I can uh, open it up for some questions if you'd like. Yeah, go ahead. Try to stump me. Um, on the roadways, w we are working on a plan to turn uh, Main Street back to two-way traffic. Um, that would include uh, rebuilding all the intersections downtown. It's going to involve more paving uh, and, and rehabbing of that. Uh, we just uh, reopened Center Street after um, a reconstruction project, although that's Ward 3, um, but it's an important project to connect uh, a, a bicycle path through downtown. You may have seen the new bike lanes on Main Street. We hope to connect the, the bike lane that continues across uh, West Elm onto Main, onto Center then, and then you know connecting people to the train station. Ma'am?
It, it is. It is. We've been working with um, Councillor Nicastro uh, on a plan for the Southern Main Street corridor that includes uh, the Campello Business District. And we have a, a pretty strong, what we call a community vision for the area to bring back, um, you know, the, the walkable downtown that was, you know, village center that was Campello. And then how do we uh, reposition the old Kmart Plaza, which there's, there's not much of a call for a lot of new commercial space down there, but there could be some good redevelopment opportunities for light industrial. So uh, we're working with her right now on how we might rezone that area so that we can attract new development and attract more jobs. Our zoning doesn't make it easy to do business here in the city. And so we've been working with our, our counselors and we, we've made some good progress uh, so far. Um, we, we continue to chip away at that. Um, and, and hopefully we'll have um, Councilor Nicastro introducing some new legislation this year. Thank you. Yes, Miss. Yes. We're pretty sure we know the cause, um, and uh, we're working on on a remedy now. The issue with um, Main Street and Center uh, and Legion Parkway is the old intersection that they have now. If you remember, the the traffic signals are on posts and they're on the sides of the intersection. So if I'm sitting at School Street at the light and I'm looking down the street, I see the light over Main Street and at Court and Pleasant. And so I pick up speed and I'm heading down the street and you go start to go uphill and I'm still looking at that green light up there, I don't see that center has turned red. And so you get a lot of cross traffic, you get a lot of T-boning. And so what we're working with now, um, Larry Raleigh, who is our uh, head of DPW, has been working to um, advance a plan to uh, make some uh, early improvements there that would include uh, some bump outs and some, um, some ways of protecting the neighborhood health center. But most importantly, we need to have a new traffic signal there. And so he'll be advancing uh, a, a plan simultaneously with our two-way transportation plan because we don't want to make an investment and then have to tear it out later but having those um, street lights where you can traffic lights excuse me where you can see them is would certainly help improve um, improve safety there yes sir uh, Rob may, um, if, if I may. <laughs> just, just you uh, may in that entire up to almost Allen's Grocery, you have a lot of people, and this goes to what Lynn was saying, that crowd the box, if you will, at all the intersections. And it's just like, they, there's a stop line here, the light changes, it's clear, the car's all the way through the intersection. There's no open zone. People have to try to back up, move, stuff like that. You see it a lot in the area. Exactly. Um, is there any short-term solution, barring you know having to do you know, traffic lights or anything that might not be impacted by the street going possibly two ways, that we can do short-term to alleviate that? Because it's not just that intersection, but that's one of the worst. It, it, it is one of the worst, and I'm tangled up in the cords back here. Um, but that's one of the things that we see when we bring the bicycle and the motorcycle patrols out. Uh, it's easier for them to, to maneuver between the cars and to get closer to the intersections so we can see people when they are, are blocking the, the what you see the signs in New York, don't block the box, don't which is the, the, box, yeah. the center of the intersection. It's something that is not ingrained in our Massachusetts DNA. Um, not that that's true too. Um, but it, it's, it's something that we have to do through more enforcement and um, better education. And I know that the, um, the police department uh, and uh, our friends at 
Old Colony Planning Council do a really good job of working with the school kids and learning about where to bike safety. Uh, and hopefully that kind of information will stick with them as they grow up. So we've, we've probably missed a generation. Um, it's hard to get uh, people my age to go back to school and learn how to drive properly. Um, I try, I swear I do. Um, but um, hopefully through education we'll be able to, to uh, and enforcement, make that uh, a, a safer condition. That would be interesting to bring to the traffic commission. Um, I, uh, do you sit on the traffic commission? I used to. We brought that up last year. Ah, so they're not looking. You at did you. introduce that. I yes. do remember that. So we, I will follow up with the traffic commission and see what we can do about that. Um, don't block the box. Is is special painting in the middle of the intersection that kind of draws your attention to you're in the middle of the street and you shouldn't pull forward if you know you can't clear the intersection. Hi, Ro. Uh, thank you for coming tonight. I have a question. I hear a lot from residents that I'm talking to over the years, and one of the concerns I hear, especially from elderly residents, is the lack of uh, availability to navigate the streets, especially if they're in motorized wheelchairs, etc. Are there any plans in the city works to make our sidewalks more ADA compliant with you know various you know, methodologies? Because there's really not a lot of, of, I mean, they have to come out of the sidewalk, drive down the road in order to even navigate anything. You're, you're right. And um, a lot of that stuff is covered under the Americans with Disabilities Act. Yeah. And I know that uh, our city engineer, Chike, and Larry Raleigh are working on an ADA adaptation or transition plan that um, should bring us up to code uh, throughout the city. We've spent um, a lot of uh, time and effort downtown uh, over the last four or five years uh, to when we redid the streetscape on Main Street, they, they did all the ADA crossings or the, the ramps with the tactile pads. Um, there's still more work that needs to be done, but that's part of our complete street strategy also. So whenever we go out, we, in the city, not just me, we, uh, go out and work on a, a street or a road, we're supposed to uh, uh, make those considerations um, as we repave and restripe and, and make sure that we have the crosswalks and the stop bars in the right place and improve the vis general visibility so that, um, as I'm sure you've noticed, you know, more and more, we're all getting older and, and more of us are using um, uh, wheelchairs or vehicles that you know, hover around scooters and, and things like that. And we need to make sure that all our intersections are safe for all, um, for walkers, bikers, um, and all levels of mobility. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. What can you tell me about the two commuter rail stations um, in terms of their safety, um, potential uh, enlargement, um, anything happening with them? Uh, well. First of all, we have three commuter rail stations, uh, downtown Montello and Campello. And um, I have not heard much lately about crime statistics from those areas. I know that there was a small issue at Campello. Um, there has been an increased um, observation and police presence down there. Uh, the MBTA rebuilt part of that parking area uh, to make it easier for, for vehicle, vehicles to, to use the area, um, and that there seems to be less vandalism. Uh, I don't know how the two are connected, but it just happens to be that at the same time that it, it happened. Um, commuter rail has is, is been very safe, um, an effective way for people to get in and out of um, uh, Brockton into Boston or to other areas. And uh, we're working really hard with MBTA on a new regional rail plan that would see increased service to Brockton, both you know on the short term uh, at night, uh, because there's not a lot of trains leaving Boston after, say, 10 o'clock, um, like the other lines have. And then over the next five to 10 years, Railvision will see um, 
headway or, or time between trains dropped dramatically. Sometimes you can wait for an hour and a half, two hours for the next train, and we're hoping to get that down to, to 30 minutes or less. Um, I think that they've been been pretty good. Um, has anybody had any ex experience with commuter? Uh, but they deal with the, uh, frequency of, um, it, it, having more trains would would certainly be better for the for the residents of Brockton, but the the lots that are there are are very well lit and um, are on camera, um, and we haven't seen much problem lately. Um, I believe all of those which are run by MBTA um, are still um, coin operated um, lots. Have they gone to electric? So one of the bad garage drives, the bad garage downtown, the downtown station, our Preston police station, that's a garage with security, uh, with cameras, right? and it's got machines that will take a credit card if you want to pay to go in that way, right? pay cash or credit. Uh, that one's the Oh yeah, and then Montello and Campello, I think, are still um, old school money in the slot. Oh, they are app pay. Thank you. That was thanks for the update. I did not know that. I walked to the side when I take it. Uh, any other questions? Well, I thank you for this opportunity. Um, we've been joined by uh, Ward 1 Counselor. Tim Cruz. Tim Cruz back there. Hey, how are you? Thanks for coming out. Good to see you. I came up for him, not you. Oh, <laughs> darn. <laughs> no, you let him into Ward 2 every once Got it. Got it. Thank you all. Uh, but again, thanks again to, our, uh, to you all, but also to our counselors and to our Beacon Hill uh, delegation for uh, really helping to move Brockton forward. It's going to be a great uh, year, 2019, and it's only going to get better. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate it. And also last summer, I think uh, most of you remember the Prova uh, event we had uh, at the old Kresge building. That will be happening again this summer. It will be across the street in the enter old Enterprise building where the restaurant hopefully will be there eventually. So it's going to be in that area over by the Trinity Apartments there. So that's going to start. Is there, do we have a date on that when they're going to start? Any idea? But anyway, that will be back again. It was a really uh, great, successful uh, thing, thing we had last year. It just proved that you can come downtown, be safe, enjoy yourself, have some entertainment. And it really worked out well. I don't know how many. I mean, one night we had about, what, 600 people there? So it was just, just fantastic. So um, right now we're going to bring up the school committee woman for Ward 2, Lisa Plant. Hello, everyone. Sorry for the next person that's going to have to put this all the way up again. Um, so in um, Brockton Public Schools, We've just wrapped up doing negotiations on almost every, um, every group between BEA, custodians, paraprofessionals. Um, so we've been very busy in negotiations the past, well, I served on BEA for a year and a half. So that's been taking up a lot of time um, in the school committee. We have wrapped that up. We are now going to be going right into budget season. Um, so right now our governor is proposing a seven-year phase-in for um, the foundation budget reviews recommendations on improving our public education. Um, personally, I don't think that we should be waiting seven years for that. So there still is movement um, with our district and other districts that want to see um, our schools properly funded quicker. There still is talks of lawsuits going forward. Um, this is something we're still very actively doing. Um, our superintendent was at the State House just last week and um, constantly speaking to our delegates. 
Um, thank you for Jerry for all the work that he's been doing on that and our other state reps. They have been advocates for our public education and, um, and we thank them for that. We have pre-K now available in Brockton. Um, we changed the cutoff times for kindergarten registration. In order for your child to go to kindergarten, they have to be five by August 31st for this coming school year. We don't have the December 31st cutoff anymore because we still want to offer a program for these students, but in a more appropriate setting because four-year-olds cannot do the work that we ask of our kindergartners. Um, we do have half-day pre-K now available in Brockton. Um, there is registration going on for that now. There is going to be a showcase at the Arnone School on April 29th, that's a Saturday, at 11 a.m. for anyone who's interested in getting more information about the pre-K program that we have in Brockton. This is a half-day program. Your child would either go mornings or they would go afternoons. Um, please spread the word to anyone. We want to make sure everybody knows. We've been talking about this for two years. We've been phasing in the change of the date. Um, so this is the year that goes into full effect that no child who turns five um, before August 31st, will, they will no longer be um, eligible for kindergarten. Instead, they could go into the pre-K program, which our plan is to expand, and we would love to see this program offered. Right now, the pre-K program is just offered for the students who are missing that cutoff. So right now, the program is just for students who um, will be turning five between September 1st and December 31st. Those are the students that are eligible for the pre-K. But we do look forward to expanding that program in the future. Um, kindergarten registration is going on right now, and that is wrapping up right now. So it goes by the last name of the guardian. Um, right now, kindergarten registration is going on for um, children whose parents' last name um, is letter R through Z. That's going on through the 26th. If you missed that cutoff, if you missed um, going during your allotted time, we do have open enrollment for kindergarten registration. That's going on from April 29th till May 17th. Um, on the Brockton Public Schools website, there's lots of information. You can start the pre-registration process online. That's bpsma.org. I really suggest anyone who has students in the Brockton Public Schools check out that website. It has lots of useful information on it. Um, if a student does not get registered in time, they just don't really have um, a great chance of picking their first choice. Of course, if students roll in the end of August, September, we do register those students, but it could mean that you know you're not getting that school of choice. You're not going to a school that's in your neighborhood, so it's certainly better to be on time with your child's registration. Um, our superintendent is retiring. Uh, her last day will be June 30th. Right now, we haven't started the search for a new superintendent yet. We're going to budget season. We will not be starting the search for new superintendent until after we've finished the budget season, which brings us into um, late August, at least, before we'll be starting that search. Right now, um, when she retires, our deputy superintendent will be stepping in, Mike Thomas. Um, he's well known and, and well respected in our community. I haven't heard a single complaint. I haven't ever heard a bad word about Mike. Um, so I know that he is capable of doing this work. Um, he will have our support if he needs, because he's going to be doing the work of two right now. We have discussed if, if he needs any supports to please let us know and um, we'll work with it so that we can support him while he fills in this role until we do complete the superintendent search. Um, but Kathy Smith's last day as our superintendent will be June 30th. And that's all I have to report. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lisa does a great job for the residents of Ward 2, I'll tell you that. She's fantastic. Um, also, there are pizzas up back there, so feel free to get up and grab some pizzas. We've got 10 of them on there, so hopefully I'm sure you guys will take care of them. Um, some other things going on, we really can't say. I've been working with Rob and the BRA with a possible business downtown that we really can't say much about, but if this comes to fruition, we should know within a few weeks, it's going to be huge. So there's going to be some serious, if, if this works out, you're going to see a lot of changes for the better downtown. Um, like I said, we really can't say much right now, but keep that in mind. Next few weeks, you'll be hearing. Um, next in 
probably last, I think we want to bring up the senator, Mike Brady. Say a few words. What's going on? Thank you, Councillor, and uh, appreciate all the work. We've known each other for a long, long time, and all the work you're doing in Ward 2 and the rest of our city councils, because none of us do this job alone. And uh, we've got a great state delegation with Representative Cassidy, Representative Dubois, and Representative Cronin. The governor just released his budget a little while ago. It's going to the House of Representatives. They're going to be dealing with it next week and deliberating on it, and then it goes to the Senate afterwards. And we have uh, pushed some legislation ideas to get more funding for our schools because our schools do a fantastic job. They're recognized as some of the best school uh, districts in the Commonwealth, but without the funding from the state, they would not survive. And we did meet with the superintendent, our state delegation at the Brockton High School. We also toured the Kennedy School. The kids were so well behaved that they, they, they behaved a lot better when, than when Tom and me were in school, myself. But I'll tell you, they were, they were yes sir, no sir, they were so quiet. It was just unbelievable. And, and I'm so proud of our school system and our teachers because they do a fantastic job. But we need the funding from the state. So we are looking for other revenue sources. Now, revenue has been down the past couple quarters up to the month of December. Capital gains were down, et cetera, because of some of the federal tax laws that have changed, but revenue is starting to increase this year. April 15th, people had to file their taxes in the Commonwealth. They had two extra days because of Patriot's Day, so revenue is up in, in the Commonwealth now, and we're hoping to get more money back to our cities and towns like the city of Brockton. And I know there's a lot of uh, pieces of legislation filed to increase funding on schools, and we're working with our local school departments to get more money. Transportation was mentioned a little while ago as well. We get Chapter 90 from the Commonwealth, and we're trying to get more money for that. And I know Rob may mention about two-way traffic. Uh, back when Tommy Kennedy was still alive, I worked with a uh, senator at the time. I was a rep. Uh, we got a $10 million bond bill for two-way traffic and to make other roadways funded, but the governor cut the funding. So we're hoping that uh, I'm glad that Rob mentioned this to get more funding for our downtown quarters. Our roads are in deplorable condition, and we need funding to fix those. And that's why uh, a couple of years ago there was a proposed tax increase on people making over a million dollars. And it wouldn't affect anybody on their first million. It was above and beyond that. But uh, the, the courts deemed it unconstitutional because it can't be on a ballot question where the money is being spent. It's up to us as legislators. So there are some proposals to increase funding for that. The gaming legislation that has been passed with the casinos and, and the slot parlor, that's going to bring more revenue to the Commonwealth. And then the the um, fantasy sports, which a lot of the young people bet on, we're going to be getting more revenue from that. So hopefully we'll continue to move forward. And uh, we're working to get more incentives for businesses. I serve in the Veterans Committee as well, and I also serve in Ways and Means and I'm the Chairman of the Public Service Committee. But we got a proposal to help veterans start up small businesses, so it's a little incentive for the business community. But as I mentioned, we can't do it alone. Our Representative Cassie is here tonight. He's done a lot of yeoman's work, and, and he, you know, he, he's got a wealth of experience working for a uh, good f former Senator Tom Kenny. He was a city council in Brockton, so he knows how to get things done in the rest of the delegation. But again, I want to thank um, our c city council, Tom Monahan, because we all work together for the benefit of the city of Brockton. So God bless you, and I want to wish you all who celebrate the Christian faith a happy Easter on Sunday, and for our Greek Orthodox uh, group as well, I want to wish you a a happy Easter the following Sunday. God bless you. And Passover, and Passover as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Jerry, would you like to come up and say a few words? I didn't say you could. I just asked you wanted to. <laughs> no, I was going to say something nice. I know. Thank you, Tommy. I just want to thank Tom Monahan for uh, for hosting this. He does this on uh, m monthly, it seems like, uh, occasion. But uh, uh, Tommy does a great job, and uh, I think you're running for re-election, and I hope everybody uh, gets out there and votes for you again. He uh, does a phenomenal job. He's one of my uh, favorite uh, city councilors. Um, I was just reading the paper tonight about the, uh, oh, except for Jack, Jack Lally, of course. 
Um, the, uh, the restaurant that's uh, opening where the old Corcoran building is, that's going to be a, a great thing. I know uh, Council Monaghan and I have been working on trying to get a brew pub down, down in Brockton. And that's what's going to generate uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, foot traffic and uh, all the housing that's going in downtown. And uh, Lisa, thank you very much for everything you do. And uh, uh, yeah. Kathy Smith is leaving. Uh, that's that's going to be a big loss. But uh, Mike Mike Thomas has uh, got uh, big shoes to fill. But you know he'll uh, he'll do a great job. Talking about the budget next week, uh, we're uh, um, we're working on the uh, state budget. It's a 42.7 billion dollar budget uh, that we're working on. Uh, Claire Cronin and Michelle Dubois and I will be uh, in session from Tuesday. Uh, probably 11 o'clock in the morning till 12 at night, three, four nights, four nights uh, next week. And uh, we're working on funding for, for Brockton schools. Um, I have uh, issues on my own personal, um, put $100,000 in for the uh, Neighborhood Health Center for the uh, dental repair, one of their uh, buildings. It's 30 years old. It has never been uh, uh, done. Perkins Park, uh, I'm having fencing put around that uh, uh, the memorial that's there. So some people don't sit on that uh, memorial. I think you should respect respect that. That's one of our, our big things. The Chapter 70 monies, uh, it's an increase of uh, $218 million. Uh, the city of Brockton is going to receive, uh, I'm not sure the exact amount, but uh, it's going to be an increase from uh, from last year's budget. Um, you know, down the road, and I've been working at the State House for close to 30 years. And talking about school funding, and Senator Brady can attest to this, that we're all on the same page about getting uh, something done for the gateway cities, uh, for, for schools. And we're all on the same page. We're going to get something. It fell, fell apart last uh, session. But uh, this session, there's a new chairman on both the, uh, on the Senate side that I think we're all going to work very well together. And it's going to help our uh, kids here in Brockton. And uh, Council Monian, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we got Council. Is Council Cruz still here? No. All right. I don't know. Con uh, Council Lally, did you want to? Do you have anything to say? Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just a reminder. You know, there's a lot of things that we do as a. You know, we are the legislative body of the uh, City Council. We write the laws, but one of the biggest jobs, uh, and I think that your constituents want to see, is you helping them in their everyday life. That's what happens. That's all they're worried about. They're not really caring what's going on at City Hall so much other than they're paying the taxes and how much they are. But doing the job, answering your phone calls, helping the people that have put you in the office, helping your, helping, helping your constituent out with the everyday problem. That's a, that's a huge thing that we do. And um, so if you have any issues, call your counselor. That's their job. If you've got an issue with a neighbor, if you've got an issue with anything going on in your street, what have you, Call your counselor. Not that they might have a, a beeline to the police department would have, because if you do have issues, you can just call the police department, but it doesn't hurt to help call your counselor. So just make sure you, you take advantage of it. You put us in there for a reason. If you've got issues, call us. Everybody should, should be answering their phone calls. Everybody should have their personal phones on there, so they, you sh they should be available to you. Um, uh, Southeastern Regional uh, School Committee. I'm sorry. M Mark Lindy. No, you can't. Yes, come on up. <laughs> just teasing. <laughs> I'm so used to him just doing this job. <laughs> That's it is. Well, I mean, he is. He is the man, the cable man. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that, Mike. That's okay. Um, just want to let people know the other school system is 64% uh, of the kids are from Brockton, Southeastern Regional, and we are doing well. We're on budget. We are um, trying to work on having a performing arts center at the school. Uh, we set up a Southeastern Regional Foundation and uh, we're trying to figure out how to get the money because when we redid the school, I'm not going to say at no cost, but the Mass School Building Authority gave us almost 90% to renovate the whole school. So we didn't go back to any of the cities and towns and ask for any money. But this is not allowable under Mass School Building Authority funding. We tried to build an auditorium at the time. They said no. So we're trying to do about a 340 seat auditorium that'll be wired. We have a drama program there. Uh, we have a television program there. Uh, we have a music program there and we're expanding. Yeah. The school is busting at the seams. We're at capacity and it's an admissions-based school. 
but um, I'll tell you, some of the kids that graduate from there, uh, they graduate and make more money than someone with a PhD. So that's the other part of education. Even though it's physically located in Easton, it's Brockton, and when we're all, you know, we're lucky we have a very supportive legislative delegation, and uh, the governor loves vocational education, but something we're dealing with is cuts in regional transportation because we're now competing against the regional charter school, so a lot of the money that also goes to folk techs goes to charter schools, and personally, that's one of my biggest things that I don't like. I hate seeing Brockton Public School buses roll down uh, Main Street to go to that, that charter school, and I don't want it to affect our, our school as well. So there are two representatives on Southeastern. Tony Branch is the other one, myself, so if you ever have any questions, we have all the numbers posted for all the officials on cable, and we have them on our website. So if anybody needs to ever get in touch with us, <laughs> You don't really have a phone book anymore, but you do have BCA. So I just wanted to give that update. Thank Thanks. you. All righty. Well, again, thank you very much for showing up tonight. Um, I don't know if you have any, any other questions at all. Uh, Lynn Smith, how did I know? A couple of events coming up. Come up here. Come up here. Come on down. Hi everybody, I'm Lynn Smith. I'm with the Keith Park Neighborhood Association and the Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Association. So this Saturday, the 20th, we're having our seventh annual Easter egg hunt uh, at the Fruit Center Gym, which is in back of First Evangelical Lutheran Church. It's designed for kids up to about age 14. It's free. And we have a lot of great people who contributed money, like Ray Henningsen and Campello Business Association. So 1 o'clock, uh, bring the kids, it's free. Remember that April 27th is Keep Brockton Beautiful Day. So 8 o'clock, you can go down to Heights Crossing and sign up, and then pick a corner of the city to clean, uh, clean up. The Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Association is hosting two events, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. It's a Sunday. We have our plant and seed swap in the garden. So if you're a gardener and you have too many hostas and you want to get rid of a few and you want to cut them up and bring them and swap them with other gardeners, uh, come. We have the greening of the Gateway Cities will be there. Good Sam will be there. A beekeeper will be there. A man who designed a water collection system will be there. And for a $1 donation to the garden, because it's Cinco de Mayo, you get a taco lunch. A taco, a Mexican wedding cookie, and a soft drink. Olé! No Corona. <laughs> No Corona. I went to the licensing commission tonight, and they said Tom said no Corona. Um, and then a lot of you know that um, uh, retail marijuana, recreational marijuana, is coming to Brockton. It's here. It's passed. Um, it's the law. And one of the things we're trying to do is to figure out how we can live in peace with this new industry so that they pick locations that are good locations, that are not nuisance locations, that take into account traffic and safety and, you know, are there going to be lines and that type of thing. But one of the things we also have to realize is Brockton has been designated an area of disproportionate impact which means that people who apply for a license have to write a social impact plan and a diversity plan so that everybody gets a fair shot at this industry. So if you want to be a better informed citizen to learn about this type of information, on May 8th at Messiah Baptist Church at 6.30, we have invited Andrea Cabral to come down and talk to us. She is the former um, sheriff of Suffolk County. She was assistant DA. She was secretary of public safety. She's an African-American woman, and she is now the CEO of Ascend Massachusetts. That's a medical, no, a recreational marijuana company. She will not be opening in Brockton, but her company just raised $55 million in the capital markets to open marijuana establishments throughout Massachusetts. So she has a deep, deep background in social justice and also in the process that she's had to go through in other communities. So we're really asking the city to step up its game. 
to put more information on its website, to give us frequently asked questions. And so come May 8th, 6.30, Messiah Baptist Church. It's not going to be, you know, I hate marijuana and I don't want it to come. No. It's going to be what questions do we need to ask so that we're better informed citizens so that we can live in harmony and peace with this new industry. So May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, you get your taco lunch in the Douglas Garden, and then May 8th, come and learn a little bit um, about our new industry. Thanks, Tom. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks to Lynn for all she does. She does this all. She volunteers for everything she does, and she does a great job. A lot of stuff in a lot of stuff in Ward too, all across the city, and she really uh, we really appreciate it. Okay, well, thank you again all for coming tonight. Uh, who else am I going to recognize, Jerry? Oh, we recognized Tim Cruz. What twice he wants to be recognized? <laughs> okay, he came back in. Where were you? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks again. Thanks everybody for coming, and uh, see you in a few months. Thank you.